Hello ladies and gentlemen, Row Row 82 here, your railroad archaeologist. For those of you that don't know me, let me show you guys what I do. I keep their memory alive. So all these fallen flags like Seaboard, Atlantic Coastline, Santa Fe, Conrail, I keep their memories alive through my 600 plus videos of van and railroads, historic crossings and such. I also sell merchandise like this one to help me promote my channel and uh, add to my traveling expenses so I can keep bringing you content like this. $13 plus shipping. $18 plus shipping. Guys, uh, please enjoy the video. Leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up. It helps me in the YouTube algorithm. I look forward to reading your comments. Always a pleasure. Please enjoy. Talk to you soon. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's video. So as I said, we're going to look at this 1970s railroad crossing in a little bit. But first, I'm going to give you guys some background. So first, we're going to look at the FEC Little Riversburg, which you guys know I've filmed a couple of videos on here. I come back to this site every year because it's the only remaining stretch of rail left from this historic track. So the FEC Little Riversburg, this specific stretch of track is right next to Dayland Mall. And... It joined what I call the Miami extension of the FEC Overseas Railway that ran along US-1, which I've also made a couple of uh, before and after videos. For example, this one. This was the last train in 1984. I'll include a link to both of these videos, to the Dayland Ma, to the FEC Little River Spur in the description and the last train here. So the Little River Spur that's left is basically like so, uh, it's just shy of Southwest 85th Street. And then this one where I filmed the train, or the picture of the last train in 1984, 1984 is just shy of Southwest 98th Street. So where I'm going to take you guys today, the 1970s railroad crossing is uh, Southwest 120th Street. And just for future reference, teaser, there's a couple more videos coming up on this line. Like... uh. I have a picture of the crossing where it branched off, the Homestead Air Force Base spur branched off, and I have a picture of the old cantilever crossing from 1984. And then also thanks to my subscriber, Bill, in Vermont, who was stationed in Homestead AFB in 1988. He caught a picture of like one of the last trains in 1988 in Florida City. So teaser, those, those two videos are coming up. But for now... Let's check out the 1970s railroad crossing. Thank you guys. Enjoy the video. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. It helps you in the YouTube algorithm. Again, enjoy the video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Roll Row 82 here, your railroad archaeologist. Welcome to the year 2021. So, I like to think that I'll get to the crossing in a second and the train. But I'd like to think that maybe you guys can comment below and let me know what you think. I'd like to think that railroads are an economic indicator of a certain area. So ever since the railroad left in the late 80s, you go along US-1 and you see many uh, vacant lots, if not closed off construction or what would have been construction areas. And here you have one of those. <clears throat> All right, guys. So yeah, I'm, guys and gals, I'm over here at Southwest 120th Street on the west side of the busway. Now, this street comes to a to a dead end right here. As you can see, in the 70s, it never had access. Neither did it in the 80s, 90s, or 2000s. So this was that pedestrian railroad crossing that we saw in the video. I'm a, the, however, sorry, the pedestrian crossing we saw in the picture. However, that one, it was facing west, now I'm facing east, okay? And here we have a bike path facing south. This is the bike path, that's the busway. Here you have a bus stop and facing north. So, <clears throat> this is the busway, that is US-1, here you have the new traffic lights that were, that replaced 
the older ones. By the way, I'm a fan of the older ones. Nothing beats the, beat those up. I, I know that there's a following for that. I've always been meaning to get into it. I don't know like where to get started. Where 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 can I find uh, literature on to, as to what traffic lights are made by whom and where and what city and what year and what whatever. So please comment below. I'd love to know. So yeah, this is a US one around uh, 6 p.m. and it gets pretty crazy as you guys saw. All right, so yeah, this is what you guys wanted to see here. This is where that that locomotive, wait, <clears throat> that backlight is horrible because the sun's setting over there. Yeah, so this here would have been the FEC tracks. Facing north, facing south. So right here is where we saw that locomotive parked and here's where we saw somewhere the, the cross bucks. Look out for the signals for the... <clears throat> pedestrian crossing that just down there was where those pictures were of uh, the rails being removed in 88 about maybe 15 ish blocks then that's also where we saw that the last train that used this so this area is filled with a lot of history All right, guys and gals, let me know what you think about the video. Please subscribe and like. Always a pleasure. I'm going to drop videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. Take care. Bye-bye.